Hey there, Jets fans. It has been a busy Friday afternoon um, in Jets land. Lots of news to get to. We are going to do all of that. We're going to break it all down in this Jet Fuel Rundown. I am Matt Barbado, founder and editor-in-chief of www.nyjetfuel.com, joined by Max Marcilla to talk about, a, a like I said, a very busy day um, for the New York Jets. And not all of it's really team-related, but there's still a lot going on today. We're going to start with the biggest piece of news today. DeBrickashaw Ferguson, after 10 years in the NFL, being arguably one of the best left tackles in the league for a very long time, has decided to retire at the age of 32. Um, this is this is pretty crazy news considering the Jets had recently asked um, or discussed a pay cut with Ferguson to help save some salary cap space. The Jets will save $8.265 million in cap space, so they're going to be around about $9 million, give or take, um, in salary cap space. So this is a, this is a, a really enormous announcement, um, not only just on the field, but just thinking about what DeBrickashaw Ferguson has done for this franchise. Um, I think the Jets have been able to take for granted one of the most important positions on the field for 10 years because DeBrickashaw Ferguson has been that good. So this obviously creates a huge void, even though Ferguson uh, is declining. And I think that was part of the reason why he retired. But Max, I mean, let's talk about the implications on this right now for this 2016 season. And, you know, certainly beyond that, what do you think is the biggest impact on DeBrickashaw Ferguson or from DeBrickashaw Ferguson's retirement? What do you think is the biggest impact on this uh, current team? Well, the first thing and probably the most important is it turns from a want to a need. You know, it's, it's kind of like budgeting, Matt. You want to assess the needs first on your roster and then you tackle your wants. And, you know, three days ago we were saying, okay, what are the needs? Well, you need an edge rusher. Of course, you need a quarterback now because the Jets still don't have one. And what's a want? Maybe upgrade the tackle position, maybe an interior defender, maybe a depth cornerback. Those were the wants. Well, now all of a sudden the tables have turned. Now a left tackle is an absolute need. And I know Mike McCagnin, in, I mean, he's only had one draft with the Jets, but he's really shown that he likes to take the best player available and not necessarily a player that fills a need. But you look at Mike McCagney now, and if the Jets stay at pick number 20, they might have to take an offensive tackle because behind DeBrickashaw Ferguson, the only returning Jet from last year was Brent Quale at tackle. Didn't play at all last year, got some snaps in the preseason. You don't really know what you're going to get out of him. So it turns into a really big need, and Mike McCagney might want to reassess his draft process before he takes the best player available. Yeah, this is huge for the Jets' draft needs. Um, you think about it. I, I've been saying for a while this offensive line as a unit has been regressing, and DeBrickshaw Ferguson was a part of that. But he was still – he could still hold his own. You know, you weren't you weren't overly worried about your, your left tackle turning into a turnstile. But now you look at the Jets' offensive line – you have a big void at right guard. You still don't have anybody who's really competent in that position. Brano Giacomini is a pretty much a below average right tackle at this point, I think we'd say. Mm -hmm. And um, now you just and now you lose Ferguson. That's the biggest void of all on the offensive line because you have nobody. At least the Jets at right guard and right tackle can say, okay, we can throw Brian Winters in here. Um, they used to be able to say they could throw Willie Clone in there, but Winters could at least play. He's played before. Um, the Jets, now they don't have any options at left tackle. I don't know much about Quale. I, I don't think he's anything special. Um, he got a chance in training camp and didn't really do much with it. So I, I don't think he's an answer. I, I think this this makes left tackle in particular, um, or maybe just the tackle position in general, however you want to see it, I think this makes it far and beyond the top priority for the Jets in the draft. I don't think edge rusher and outside line, linebacker comes even close, um, especially because – you, especially in the first round, because you the, you really need to get a a really talented offensive tackle in the first round, 
maybe the second round. The drop-off in between first-round offensive line talent and even second or third-round offensive line talent is pretty steep, whereas with outside linebackers, you can find some late-round flyers who could produce for you. A guy like Lorenzo Malden, who was productive. A guy like Trevor Riley. They signed a guy like Mike Catapano, who can who showed he could play. Um, so you can, you can make outside linebacker work, and the Jets' defense is good enough where, yes, it's a flaw, but it's not – it's not as bad as if the Jets go with through this season without a you know a caliber left tackle. Absolutely, I agree. And I know we're jumping to conclusions a little bit and discussing the draft. I know it's it's still a couple weeks away. You know the Jets could make a move in free agency. I, I know two names that I've heard that have been tossed around: Ryan Clady, who is on formerly yeah. with the Broncos, but coming off an ACL injury; uh, Will Beatty of the Giants, also has been banged up. So you look at the Jets and. Coming from a guy like DeBrickishaw Ferguson, who played, I, I saw the stat this morning. It was like out of ten thousand seven hundred something snaps, he's only missed one snap. That's that's in 10 incredible. Seasons. That's First incredible. of all, you might never see that ever again in in football. Ten seasons, one team, no missed snaps due to injury because the one was a trick play. You might never see that from an offensive lineman again. The only players in that span that have played every game. Uh, Philip Rivers and Eli Manning, along with DeBrickishaw Ferguson. Wow. So, first of all, that's remarkable. Second of all, now all of a sudden, DeBrickishaw, even on the decline, you knew what you were getting with him. You knew he was going to play all 16 games no matter what, wasn't going to show up on injury report. Now, not only will the Jets possibly downgrade at that position, but now it's time to start investing in some backups because you don't have that same you know, assurance that your tackle will play all 16 games. It's a really tough situation, and you know the Jets might have to attack in free agency because you know the old adage they always say: if you have a need at a position, you don't fill it up with one guy; you fill it up with two. You know, it's kind of like what the Jets did last year at the quarterback position. They had a need; they could have just got one, but no, they got Fitzpatrick and they got Bryce Petty. So it wouldn't surprise me to see the Jets if they do sign one of those free agents, maybe taking an offensive lineman third round or something. But I, I think it's the biggest need, and it needs to be addressed, possibly both in free agency and the draft. And you, and you saw it, to your point, you saw it with the corner, corner back position, too, with acquiring Darrell Rivas, Buster Screen, and Antonio Cromartie in you know, one offseason. But uh, like I said, and I think I wrote this in my piece on uh, nyjetfield.com. You can check it out in my column on the Brickishaw Ferguson, um, just this entire situation. Um, Ferguson was one of the few consistencies in a franchise riddled with mediocrity. Mm -hmm. So, and you look at, you look at the NFL, so many teams worry about protecting the quarterback's blind side. You know, you got to solidify the left tackle position. It's why you've seen guys like Luke Jokel and Eric Fisher and other players get taken first overall in the, in the top three in the draft, because left tackle, if you have a right-handed quarterback, left tackle is the most important position on the field besides the guy throwing the ball. So the Jets have been able to take this for granted for 10 years. I mean, really, you have not – other than this season, you really never worried about DeBrickashaw Ferguson's play, and you never worried about him just falling apart on the field and becoming a below-average player. You saw signs of that this season, but it wasn't a, an overwhelming, glaring concern. He was still competent. Um, now you look at it, and we've seen how hard that position is to fill around the league. Um, even the top picks don't always pan out. So now the Jets have to go from, you know, having at least the the ability to protect that quarterback to we need to find a franchise quarterback and we need to find the guy to protect him for the next 10 years. And that is not very easy. And I know a lot of fans think about this short term and think, oh, this is great. We're going to get Fitzpatrick now. You know, we freed up all this money. But really, I mean, I think fans are undervaluing just how vital this guy was for this organization. Two things, Matt. Number one, the, the thing I think those fans are forgetting is the Jets still only have $9 million. I mean, it's not like the Jets are, you know, jumping into a pool full of money. I mean, they had less than a million dollars before DeBrickishaw Ferguson retired, don't have $10 million. I know Fitzpatrick wanted more than that, so they might need to make another move. I know we've discussed Muhammad Wilkerson, but just because this one move seems to be done with doesn't mean the Jets are, you know, ready to go out on the open market and and spend all the money like they did last year. That's first of all. Second of all, you mentioned those top guys at the top of the draft. I want to talk about uh, Laramie Tunzel, the tackle from Mississippi, because 
A, fills up a need, and B, I think you could be a, he could be a tremendous NFL player. And Matt, you actually heard something about the Jets, unlikely, but maybe jumping up to that first overall pick. Yeah, there was a report from uh, DraftInsider.net's Tony Pauline, who's a, who uh, mentioned the Jets is one of four teams to inquire about acquiring the number one overall pick from Tennessee. Um, I don't think this is exactly viable, and even Pauline mentioned that Yes, the Jets are seen as dark horses, and sources around the league don't view um, don't view the franchise as one that has a lot of assets to make this sort of jump. Because jumping from number twenty to number one overall, that's a huge leap, and you can look at it on a draft value chart. Any just the just nineteen picks, you can just you know that's a sizable jump. Um, I don't think it's very viable. Uh, I think you would have to give away probably Muhammad Wilkerson and two first-round picks, including the 20th overall pick this year. Um, I'm not sure if the Jets want to do that. And they only have six picks this year. So if Tennessee really wanted more, um, I don't think the Jets would be in a position where they can give away any more draft picks. The Jets can't really lose any more draft picks. If anything, they have to trade back and uh, you know pile up some picks. So, Max, what do you, what do you think about the viability of this? If you could put it on a – We'll put it on a 1 to 10 scale, 1 being it's not going to happen at all, 10 being I think it's a lock. Yeah, I'll give it, I'll give it a 1 or a 2, Matt. I honestly don't see it happening for all the reasons I agree. you mentioned. First of all, I mean, how many times do you see a team trading for the number one overall pick? Every year you hear it. This, this team wants to trade. This team likes this prospect. You hear it every year. Last year. Last year was with um, Tampa when, Bay. It seemed like something was definitely going to happen. Somebody was going to make the move, and then no trades happened at all. Yep. And that happens every year. That number one pick is so highly coveted because every team thinks they can take the player that'll change the course of their franchise's history. First of all, you probably not going to happen because the draft is just a huge crapshoot. And second of all, the Jets simply don't have the assets. Even if they do find a deal that would appeal to the Titans, I don't think they want to you know, give up their entire future for uh, a guy – I think Tunzel could be a long-term solution, and maybe the Jets even wanted to target one of the quarterbacks at the top right. of the draft. But it, it's just too big of a risk. I don't think the Jets are in that business. Uh, I don't even think they have the assets, first of all. I'd put it at a one. It is an interesting concept to think about because you do want to you know, talk about these guys at the top of the draft boards and kind of play out in what scenarios can they come to New York. But I don't see it happening, Matt. Well, Tunzel's a stud. So the team that gives up the number one overall pick, especially a team like Tennessee that needs that blindside protector to protect a franchise quarterback potentially in Marcus Mariota, um, Tunsil's a stud. He's going to be a great NFL player. I've watched him a bunch covering the SEC. So he, he's, a, he's a stud. Yeah, that's um, another thing is Tennessee would make a huge mistake passing up on him. But we, that's a whole – that's a different discussion. You'd have to – I mean, you'd really – if you're Tennessee, you'd have to get either like – two first round picks and a, and a decent mid round pick or like a player like Mo Wilkerson and two first round, you'd have to get at least two first round picks out of it. Absolutely. I just don't see the jets making that deal. Yeah. So I don't, I don't think it adds up. Um, it, Mo Wilkerson's a big trade chip and I would not be stunned whatsoever if the jets make a move on draft day and he's involved, but for the number one pick, you're going to have to get a lot more, maybe to move up five, maybe 10 spots in the draft. I could see it. Um, but I don't, I don't think so for the number one overall pick. Mm -hmm. A couple of uh, little tidbits here because it has been a very busy news day um, around the team. Brandon Marshall won his civil suit today. He was being sued seventy five, uh, sued seventy five thousand dollars for damages over a civil case where he allegedly punched a woman. Um, the jury ruled that the evidence was not sufficient. Um, I guess there was a video that really didn't depict the entire scene well. I guess it was a grainy, um, not very clear uh, picture. So Marshall is, um, he's free, I guess. Um, <laughs> no legal problems with this. I don't think the NFL will um, hand down any discipline for this because clearly it seems like he did nothing wrong. Um, and finally, the Jets have officially signed kick returner and punt returner Jeremy Ross. So Max, to wrap this up, give me one word to describe the signing of Jeremy Ross. Competition. I love it. Every year going into preseason, I love competition. You know, last year we had Walter Powell and Chris Wusu battle it out for either a wide receiver position or a kick returning position. And this year, you know, don't forget the Jets have Dre Archer, who is that absolute speedster, was on Pittsburgh for a little while, can return kicks. Ross can return kicks. So I'm all for competition. 
could see the two of them, you know, in a battle for the the solution to the Jets' never ending special teams problem. So it's that'll be fun. Door. It'll it's be something interesting door. to keep an eye out for. So I mean, I, you can't you can't criticize the signing. It, it'll be interesting to see. It's whatever. That's my word. Whatever. <laughs> um, until I see it on the field. And Jeremy Ross, he's he's actually he's actually proving he's a competent kick returner. This isn't some guy who they're just like trying out or experimenting with. Uh, Jeremy Ross can return kicks and punts. I think he could be a, a good weapon as a punt returner. Same with Dre Archer. Maybe the Jets are turning around on special teams. I've heard great things about the Jets' new special teams coach from Indianapolis. Um, the name, I can't come up with the name right now, but I've heard some good things about him, uh, one of the better special teams minds in the game. So maybe the Jets' special teams are on the up and up. I mean, it seems like it's been since, geez, since Rex Ryan started, since the Jets have had a good special teams uh, unit. So maybe, just maybe, the Jets could get something out of their kick and punt returners. But this don't year. get your hopes up. Right, I exactly. That will ever be solved. Yeah. That's why. That's why my word is whatever because it might not matter knowing this team's history with special teamers. So uh, that will wrap up our little jet fuel rundown here. Um, lots going on. So be sure to stick with our site. Uh, keep checking us out for any news and uh, updates. I'm sure there will be a some sort of press conference for Debrickashaw Ferguson. I mean that guy. He's not to go back to him for too long, but I mean, what he's done for this franchise should not be underestimated by one lackluster season and a high cap hit. So, um, Debrickashaw yeah, Ferguson. One day you'll see Nick Mangold and Debrickashaw Ferguson on the field together, accepting oh, their Ring of Honor inductees. That'll absolutely. Be a, that will absolutely. be a fun game to go to, Jets fans. Buy your they tickets are, as early as you can. I'm sure the Jets will start selling them tomorrow if they could. That would be a hell of an event to go to. I mean, especially if you're like a, a a fan like me and you who have sort of grown up watching these two anchor the offensive line for 10 years. Yeah. That would be very cool. But yeah, That was the first draft I ever watched, 2006. It, mm -hmm. hit, it hits deep on a personal level, Matt. I'm growing yeah, up as a football fan. I'm going to college. My The players in my first draft class are retiring. It, it's, it's You're getting so, old. You're getting old. Getting old. 17. Whew. You're getting old, man, and I'm 23, so it's like, wow, I feel really old. But, yeah, those guys are definitely locks for the Ring of Honor. Mm -hmm. um, it has been fun watching the Brickashaw Ferguson play the past 10 years. And um, I, I think if I'm the Jets, you have to keep him within – involved within the organization in some way, whether it's an ambassador or uh, I've heard rumors that he wants to get into front office work. So maybe DeBrickashaw Ferguson could scout out the next uh, Jets left tackle. I've heard rumors he wants to get into journalism. I heard Rich Semini on ESPN uh, radio today saying DeBrickashaw might want to get into journalism. So if you, if you happen to be watching this DeBrickashaw, the application's on the site. We'll, we'll take oh, he you no matter what apply. you write. We'll he take wouldn't you. have to apply. You wouldn't have to apply. Yes, columns, just, podcast appearances, whatever. We'll, we'll rename the site just for you, DeBrickashaw. FergusonFuel.com. <laughs> there you go. Um, yeah, the, the Brickashaw Ferguson, you would never have to apply to this site because we don't take <laughs> ourselves that seriously. So we would love to have you, um, even in a guest role or a podcast appearance or even a video appearance. So, um, But I, I think it's appropriate to thank Brickashaw Ferguson for the 10 years he's had with this team. Um, I know you try and kind of veil the, you know, the, the bias and the, um, you try, the subjectivity, but you have to appreciate what this guy's done for this franchise and he's really been impeccable on and off the field. So uh, thank you to Brickashaw Ferguson and uh, that'll wrap up the jet fuel rundown. Be sure to follow Max on Twitter at mmarcilla 98. Be sure to follow me at real Matt Barbado. And of course, of course, I cannot emphasize this enough. Follow us on Twitter at New York jet fuel. Very easy to do. Like us on Facebook as well. And uh, be sure to stick with us for any more breaking news. Cause it's not even, it's only four o'clock, so plenty can happen. Uh, this has been a Jet Fuel Rundown.